most of this lesson has been devoted to laying down the representational conventions and the specific aspects of excited state structure that we want to pay attention to. Now we're going to transition into connecting the structure of an excited state with some energy aspects of its various possible uh, states and, and configurations. And in particular, we're going to focus on this energy difference between the singlet and triplet states that we introduced in the last video. So I alluded to this in a previous video that the typical situation, and in, in fact, the universal situation is that the triplet state is lower in energy than the singlet state. They are either equal in energy or the triplet state is lower in energy than the singlet state. This always holds true. And we're gonna define and, and use this energy difference as delta EST, the energy difference between the singlet and triplet states, where by convention we, we use this as a, a positive number. The question is, why does this happen? Why is the triplet state lower in energy than the singlet state? Particularly, this, this might seem a little bit counterintuitive given that we're used to dealing with singlet states in uh, ground state structures on a regular basis. And so what is it about the singlet state that makes it unstable relative to the triplet state. Well, this is honestly a little bit difficult to get a handle on, but at the very least, we're gonna develop a functional understanding where we can connect the very structure, and in particular, the NBO orbital structure of an excited state and the nature of the SOMOs, we can connect that to a prediction of at least relative delta EST value. So we could look at two structures, for example, two chromophores, and draw conclusions about which is likely to have the greater or the lesser delta EST. So to begin thinking about how this works, I want to go all the way back to a fundamental quantum mechanical principle, the Pauli exclusion principle. The Pauli principle essentially says that no two electrons can have identical properties at the same time, identical quantum numbers, for example. The Pauli principle is particularly relevant to the triplet state because the unpaired electrons in a triplet state, in the SOMOs, have the same spin. So if those two electrons were to occupy the same space, they would have identical properties, identical quantum numbers, and be in the same region of space. That violates the Pauli principle. So there's this intrinsic desire quote unquote, for triplet electrons to avoid one another. They, they just do it, right? They just avoid one another. And this leads to an energy lowering relative to the singlet state where there is no spin induced effect that keeps the electrons relatively far apart, leading to reduced electron electron repulsion. So let me take that general idea and put it in the context of a particular example the pi pi star excited state of an alkene, like ethylene. So it's a little bit difficult to see here, but the structure we're looking at here is ethylene, C2H4, and it's kind of oriented in this drawing such that the molecular plane is, is more or less perpendicular to the screen. So here's a Lewis structure for ethylene in the orientation it's given in the image here. And what you're seeing are the pi and pi star orbitals. So the pi orbital here is drawn in blue and red. We can see the blue and red lobes of the pi bonding orbital there, no node between the nuclei and all that good stuff. We're familiar with this shape at this point. And the pi star orbital is drawn in green and yellow, just to show um, contrasting colors, right? If you kind of peer inside the pi orbital, we can see that there's a node between the nuclei and most of the density is actually on the outside of the two carbons and the uh, orbital density there is highlighted in yellow and green. So, and let's think about this as the triplet state. So we have, for example, an upspin electron in the pi orbital and an upspin electron in the pi star orbital. Now, clearly, based on this picture, there's extensive overlap between the pi and pi star orbitals. You can imagine that, you know, an electron that's occupying the pi star orbital, for example, may be found, you know, in this, in this region of space. But there's a decent chance that an electron that's occupying the pi orbital can be found in a similar region of space. Because of the large degree of orbital overlap, there's a good chance that the electrons are gonna be found in a similar region of space. However, that's a problem for the triplet state because of the Pauli principle. 
right? These electrons cannot occupy the same region of space without violating the Pauli principle. So there's an energetic penalty associated with occupying the same space or energetic savings for the electrons to spend more time farther apart. So in the triplet state, the electrons tend to be found farther apart from one another due to the fact that their parallel spins give them an impulse to be located far apart from one another at any given point in time. If we switch over now to thinking about the singlet state, in the singlet state, we actually don't have that impulse based on spin because the electron spins are now anti-parallel. So let's think now about the singlet state. And now there is no spin-based impulse for these electrons to spend a lot of time far apart from one another. And so on average then, or if we look you know, at any given point in time, the singlet electrons with oppositely paired spins will be closer together. And being closer together, these electrons will experience electron-electron repulsion, and that corresponds to a destabilizing effect. The singlet state incurs an energetic penalty because there is no spin-induced effect that keeps the electrons relatively far apart. This spin-induced distancing of the electrons in a triplet state relative to a singlet state is called the exchange interaction. And we've really only touched the tip of the iceberg as far as what the exchange interaction entails here. Again, just trying to develop an intuitive visual understanding of what's going on here, our quantum intuition. The linked article right here um, dives into the exchange interaction in more detail. If you're intrigued by this sort of mystical quantum mechanical effect, I encourage you to check out um, this, this article. And so to sum things up, what we can say is that the exchange interaction is responsible for the energy difference between singlet and triplet states with the same electron configuration. So say S1 and, and T1, um, where we're dealing with pi, pi star states, the energy difference here is due to exchange interaction. We'll see very shortly that the energy difference between the singlet and triplet states, delta E S T, depends profoundly on the nature of the chromophore and the nature of the SOMOS in particular, um, the nature of the excitation that led to the excited state and the occupancies and shapes of the singly occupied molecular orbitals. And delta E S T values can span a pretty large range, anywhere from zero for biradicals in which the unpaired electrons are at a very large distance from one another to say 70 kilocalories per mole when we have two uh, SOMOs in the excited state that are very, very profoundly overlapping. To get a handle on this, let's survey some examples of delta E S T for various chromophores. So for ethylene, where the configuration, the electron configuration is pi, pi star, delta E is up at 70 kilocalories per mole among the largest. Um, and we'll see the reason for that on the next slide. For benzene, again, pi pi star excitation, it's about 40 kilocalories per mole, and similar values for polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. But when we get to carbonyls, there's a huge qualitative difference between the carbonyls and these CC pi bond functionalities. And notice that there's a difference here in the nature of the electron configuration. We're going from pi, pi star states at the top of the table, relatively large delta EST, to N pi star states where delta EST gets much smaller, 10 kilocalories per mole, seven kilocalories per mole. Why is this? Well, looking at the shapes of the SOMOs will tell us why. The key general principle that connects structure and electron configuration to delta EST is this. The greater is the orbital overlap between the singly occupied MOs, or what we have been calling the SOMOs, in the excited state, the larger the magnitude of delta EST. And the reason for this is that the exchange interaction becomes stronger, or we could say the exchange energy, which is really responsible for this singlet triplet energy difference, increases. So let's explore the difference between a pi pi star state of an alkene, for example, ethylene, and an N pi star state of a carbonyl compound of which formaldehyde is a very prototypical example. And in fact, we've already seen the SOMOs of pi pi star ethylene drawn out on the previous slide, but just to emphasize this one more time, 
There is profound orbital overlap between the pi and pi star orbitals. They're both above and below the molecular plane and living in, in very similar regions of space. To some extent, I'm not even doing this justice. The image on the previous slide shows a profound amount of orbital overlap between the pi and pi star orbitals here. The situation is significantly different when we talk about in pi star excitation. So let's draw formaldehyde kind of in a similar orientation with the CH bonds pointed into the plane of the screen and out of the plane of the screen like this and the carbonyl oxygen here. In the N pi star state, we have two SOMOs, the pi star orbital. Let's actually highlight that in yellow and green as we did for the uh, ethylene case. Here's the pi star SOMO. It looks just like any other pi star orbital. And now the N SOMO. Well, the, the N SOMO is in the molecular plane. <laughs> N for non-bonding, but N for it's in the molecular plane. And so it is perpendicular to the pi star orbital. So I'm going to try to show that the best I can. Imagine that this red lobe is pointed directly out towards you, and there's a, a much smaller nub on the backside of the oxygen atom that is, is also uh, part of the N orbital. What this picture shows us is that there is very little orbital overlap between the N and pi star orbitals. Very little orbital overlap between the SOMOs in this excited state. Qualitatively speaking, we might say that the electrons just don't see as much of each other in the N pi star state as they do in the pi pi star state. And this leads to a much weaker exchange interaction in the N pi star state. Put another way, say we're dealing with you know, a singlet state with anti-parallel electrons, the electrons hardly know that the other electron is, is around, right? Uh, because they're living in very different regions of space by virtue of the shapes of these basically perpendicular or orthogonal molecular orbitals. By contrast, in the pi, pi star state, these electrons are acutely aware that they are living in very similar regions of space. And, and you can, we can see just from this basic picture that the distance between the electrons is generally speaking much larger in the n pi star state than it is in the pi pi star state. Again, intuitive, qualitative, but allows us to make correct predictions of delta EST for various chromophores and various excited states in particular of those chromophores. And I should emphasize that. Of course, the story is very different for the pi pi star excited state of the carbonyl group where we again just like the ethylene case, have this profound orbital overlap going on. But interestingly, due to polarization, not quite the same as ethylene uh, for the carbonyl pi pi star state, but we won't go into the details of that here. The major conclusion from this analysis is consistent with the experimental result of the, the difference in energy between the singlet and triplet states. The S1 and T1 states for ethylene are much farther apart in energy than the S1 and T1 states for formaldehyde, which are much closer in energy. And actually, if we go back to the table here, the table bears this out. For formaldehyde, delta EST is only 10 kilocalories per mole. For ethylene, it's way up at 70 kilocalories per mole. Finally, I want to mention that this idea of tuning the singlet-triplet energy gap via structural modifications or, or changing the nature of a chromophore has profound practical applications that are an active area of study. So here's a paper from May 2019 that specifically mentions the singlet-triplet energy gap, what we've called delta EST. And they, in this paper, undertook to narrow or shrink delta EST to achieve what's called thermally activated delayed fluorescence. This is a phenomenon we may or may not see in this course involving a type of fluorescence that originates from the triplet state undergoing reverse intersystem crossing back to the singlet state. So the smaller delta EST facilitates going back to the higher energy singlet state and fluorescence from there. And they achieved this via charge transfer. And ultimately what this means is they created a material where the SOMOs in the excited state are profoundly separated in space. Equivalently, the HOMOs and LUMOs 
are in different positions in space. And so the excited state has very little orbital overlap between the SOMOs, and this results in a very small singlet-triplet energy gap. Structural modifications like tacking on electron donating group Structural modifications like tacking on an electron donating group on one side of a molecule and an electron withdrawing group on the other side can be used to pull the HOMO and LUMO to different locations on the structure, narrowing the singlet-triplet energy gap and facilitating this delayed fluorescence.